ti ti ta ti ti ta ti 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 ti
Thank you very much. We are Akasha. We are from Kuala Lumpur. Apa kabar semua? Semua okay? Yeah. All right, we won't talk too much because there's been so much talking already today. All right, for those of you who don't know, Akasha was born in 2008. We, we uh, formed for a one-off show. Someone contacted myself, Kumar, and Vicky to put together a band to play at the Rainforest World Music Festival in Sarawak. Yeah, it's a great festival. Awesome. And um, I was asked to do it, and I didn't know much about world music, but I did own a Ravi Shankar CD, so I thought, okay, I can do this. Um, I'd been doing a lot of pop music because I'm a session guitar player by trade, so it was really nice to be given the chance to do something different. So we went there, and my goodness, we had such a positive experience. We met people from Africa, from uh, the Caribbean, from Poland, from Hungary, from Portugal, and we all played together, either on the stage or in the hotel rooms. We couldn't even have a conversation because we didn't even have a common language. Someone spoke English, some spoke French, some spoke don't know what. But it, the, 
we could all play music together, and it just showed you the, the universal power of music. And we came back and thought, okay, we need to do more of this. So we, uh, we revised the lineup. I recruited a few more of these gentlemen you see on stage, and we recorded an album. And we thought, okay, what is it we want to do? How can Akasha differentiate themselves from so many world music bands? We thought, okay, first off, we are Malaysian. So... So what we wanted to do was to somehow synthesize all of the elements that we have here in Malaysia, because Malaysia has such a diverse culture. We have Malay, Indian, Chinese, others, others, others. So many compared to most countries. So we thought, we've all seen traditional Malay, traditional Indian, and everything else. We thought, how can we mix it all together? So that was our plan. For me as a composer, I learned um, how to play what kind of music suits the Indian instruments, because obviously the Indian instruments have such a strong character, the sitar and the tabla, so everyone thinks we're an Indian band. But um, we actually feature a lot of different elements, so I'll just try to give you an example of some of the elements we, we try and put together, because some people say, this cannot go with this, this cannot do this, this one cannot, this is a pure music. We say, forget it, purity is overrated. So we just put it all in the pot. So I started off being a Westerner, Thank you. Playing music like um, blues. But then I learned some Indian music. Basically, uh, Kumar taught me a few things, Vicky taught me a few things. Um, and I found it was actually quite similar. There was a lot of similar bending, it was just a little bit of different phrasing. And also a lot of droning. He drones on and on and on. When, when normally Western music, we just play one note at a time. But with a sitar, you have another string playing. So I learned to do that on the guitar too. So this is what I had to learn to then be able to compose songs that work for us. So we also try to incorporate some other elements, uh, including uh, Chinese, traditional Chinese pentatonic. Uh, Indonesian, uh, like Javanese gamelan music. these very nice scales. Uh, we have some Arabic heritage in the band, so we, we try to influence to put some Arabic type of scales and type of rhythms uh, within Akasha. It's a Dalbuka drum playing an Arabic pattern. Thank you, Bada. And then the more interesting part is how do we mix everything together, you know? So blues is fine, but I mean, I thought, how does blues sound if it's played on the sitar? So Kumar Kartagesu is a classically trained sitar player. Now he's an outcast because I've converted him to the devil's music of the blues. Kartagesu, playing the blues on the sitar. I had another idea of a song, and I was, had this melody in my head. I think it was from a traditional Irish or Celtic thing. And it was like a... OK, 
okay, that's nice and everything. And then I realized the rhythm structure is exactly the same as a Malay jogit. So we throw in the rabana playing a jogit groove. And then get an Indian sitar to play the Irish melody. Exactly. So there we go. It's kind of like an Irishman comes to Malaysia and starts dancing around like a deranged Malaysian leprechaun <laughs> after eating a big curry. And uh, just one final musical note. Two other elements that we, we wanted to introduce was Latin. Because our piano player, Eric Lee, originally from Shanghai, but when I first met him, I told him, dude, you are a Latino trapped in a Chinese body. <laughs> so we wanted to introduce his Montuno style of piano playing, but again, that's been done before. So we thought, how about if we combine that with Vicky's classical Indian tabla playing, when he will vocalize the sounds as he's playing it. And uh, they kind of do it together. So it's like this kind of thing. One. So these were very much the things we want to do. And this is the message of Akasha, really, is that breaking down boundaries between cultural, uh, religious, politi political, nationalistic, whatever, you know? People put up walls and say, oh, this is different. You cannot do this. This is going to do this. But actually, our message is you can. And if the guy sitting next to you has got a different skin tone to you, or a weird sounding name, or eats different food to you, or has a different name for God. It doesn't matter, you know? It's like the cultural differences we have are not anything to be scared of or separated from. When we come together, whether it's music or in your own life, you know, I think our experience is much richer for it. Ladies and gentlemen, the other message that Akasha carries through our various journeys to different countries, we found that music was such a powerful communicator. It carried a message. It spoke volumes way beyond what ordinary languages can do, ordinary words can do. As seen so many times in the past, people turn to music when they are in deep despair, when they are in deep sorrow, when they want to share romance and love. And in our travels, we have experienced a lot of this ourselves. One of the examples was when we were in South Korea. We were in an auditorium pretty much like this one with a sea of people. And the MC announced us and said, oh, presenting Akasha Malaysia, of course, in Korean language. And we had deadpan faces throughout the, the whole auditorium. Like, there was not even one clap. I think they were and, not sure uh, really what to do. Yeah, they were just, you know, they, who were this bunch of funny people sitting on stage with funny instruments? But then we got into the music and we decided to do what we do best. We had fun on stage, we communicated with each other. And by the end of the first song, we could see one head nodding along. By the end of the second song, there were a few smattering of applause in the audience. And then by the end of our set, we had a whole queue of people waiting to come up to the stage and pat us on the back and shake our hands and just smile at us. They couldn't speak to us, they couldn't talk to us, but Obviously, the music had touched them in a very deep way. Another example was when we were in South Africa and we had performed our set in the auditorium. And we went outside, we were walking back to a hotel and there was this bunch of street people who, who had been at the concert and obviously were so touched by the music that they purchased the CD and they were playing it in a little CD player, CD amplifier on the outside, on the streets and they were dancing along to it. Now, we touched us so much because these were street people in Africa, and they saw fit to go and spend that little precious money that they had to buy a CD 
and put it in, and, and they were enjoying it with so much joy. And this is the message that Akasha carries. And all of us in Akasha joined this band not for any commercial reason. As Jamie explained earlier, we didn't think we were going to exist beyond one concert. But then here we are today, seven years later, uh, 150 concerts or so later. And the message that we like to share with the youth of today, the youth of tomorrow, is that chase your passion. Chase what's important. Chase the dream of creating that music, of communicating, of speaking out to each other. And everything else comes true. The money comes, the career comes, the career path forms by itself. It's like the universe conspires to help you become successful. And my guru, my teacher, Ustad Usman Khan from Pune, used to give a very a short story. Um, the story is of two Indian gods. One is Saraswati, the goddess of wealth. Uh, uh, sorry, Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge. And Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth. And the people always chase after Lakshmi because they want the wealth, right? But she keeps running away from you all the time. But if you do choose to chase after Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge, Saraswati is the god who will drag Lakshmi by the ear and say, this is my child, look after him, look after his material needs, do everything. So it's just a simple anecdote to say, chase your passion and everything else in life will come true. Thank you very much for having us, TEDx. Do we have time for one more song? No? Okay, they said Ken. Sorry. Okay, okay. Fast one. Okay, we'll play as quick as we can. All right, here we go. This is called Chasing the Camel. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for having us. Sorry we droned on a little bit too long. And uh, we'll be around later, so um, we'll hope to meet some of you later on. We are Akasha. Thank you very much. One, two, three, four.